First question for you is with respect to the exam. Sorry, you uh, have seen it copy in my exam. Is there anything that wasn't accepted on the exam? I try to be blunt with you. I'm not trying to be one of those that is going to pull a rabbit out of my hat and try to trick you. So that's why I asked. I'm assuming if you did the homework, it should have been a pretty much of a breeze because it looks a lot like the homework in most regards. Any questions for me about the test? Okay, so I'm going to 
Except for when they'll be graded, I will be working on them this week. I hope to get them to you by Friday. But that's the only question I don't have an answer to. I will be posting your folder for this week sometime this afternoon. I did not get back from my trip until yesterday, so I haven't had time to catch up with that. Um, so I will be working on grading and also getting your uh, folder for this week posted as soon as I can. But the majority of the information we're actually going over this week is going to be found in last week's folder because we're going to talk about the anions. And then we're going to talk about polyatomic ions. So it's pretty much in your folder from last week. Um, any questions? Okay, if not, then the two topics I'm going to cover today are the anions of the elements in specific. Actually, there'll be three topics, but we'll start with the anions of the elements, the atomic number, number of protons, number of electrons in an ion, and then with whatever time uh, remains, we'll start talking about our polyatomic anions. Because that is a long conversation because as we get into the polyatomic anions, folks, one of my goals is to teach you how to memorize them because there's around 80 of them I expect you to know. And so there is a way to help you memorize them, but it is related to what we're gonna go over today with the, which is the anions of the elements. So I don't remember, I think it was Monday of last week. Um, I introduced this concept and when I introduced it, I said that, first of all, an anion is an ion of an element that has a negative charge. The anions will be nonmetals and metalloids. Your elements in group 15 that are nonmetals and metalloids form a minus three charge. Your non-metals and metalloids in group 16 form a minus two charge. And your non-metals and metalloids in group 17 form a minus one charge. First of all, I want to just describe how to memorize it. Number one, where are the nonmetals and metalloids on the periodic table? <clears throat> it starts with group. Well, technically, the nonmetals and metalloids are anything. The metalloid is boron, silicon, arsenic, and, uh, arsenic, antimony, tellurium, bromium, astatine. Oh, I forgot to name them. Those are your metalloids. The non-metals are to the right of it. So that's the first thing you have to know. Metalloids, non-metals, when they form an ion, are going to do so, making a negative charge. Now, the next thing you need to know. Goes back to naming. Who were my noble gases? Group 18. Okay, so group 15, I said made a minus three, correct? Well, count with me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
two, three. Group 16 made a minus two. You count. One, two. Group 17 makes a minus one. One. So in other words, it's however many spaces is needed, or however many is needed to get to the visible gaps. So that's a way to help me memorize what charge they form is based off of their location relative to the middle gases. So there's a lot of little bitty details that are important in the statements that I have listed. The very first thing that was important was that it was the nonmetals and metalloids that form the anions and they do so at a negative charge. Now, let's discuss naming the ions or the anions of an element. And I am going to do so. We're going to write, I'm going to write them all out so that you have them. So, group 15, you have nitrogen. In the form of nitrogen, its elemental symbol would just be N. But because it is a group 15 nonmetal, it's going to make an N3 minus charge. And when it does so, it becomes nitride. The next one is phosphorus, which is a P. Because it's in group 15, it does form a three minus charge and that becomes phosphide. Arsenic is a metalloid in that one. It is AS. When it forms a charge, it will be AS3 minus because it's in group 15 and it becomes arsenide. If I could spell arsenide. For group 16, the top one is the element oxygen, which is an O. Because it is in group 16, it makes O2 minus, and that is oxide. Then you have sulfur, which is S. Because it is in group 16, it makes S2 minus and becomes sulfide. The next one down is selenium, which is SE. When it, since it's in group 16, it makes SE2 minus and becomes selenide. And lastly, you've got tellurium in that group, which is TE, makes a two minus charge since it's in group 16. So it's called telluride, which is actually a city in um, 
Colorado. Just a piece of information, random information. <laughs> oh, really? Okay, group 17. You have fluorine, which is F, but in its charge state, it takes on a minus one charge since it's group 17 and becomes fluoride, such as in the material that helps with teeth. Then you have chlorine, Cl, since it's group 17, becomes a minus one and becomes chloride. Then you have bromine, which is Br, which becomes Br minus as an ion, and that is bromide. Then you have iodine, which becomes I minus, called iodide. And lastly, you have astatine, AT. Since it's in group 17, it's AT minus and becomes astatide. I'm letting everyone catch up. So what did you notice? Element anions end in I, D, E. That's important. Make a highlight. Highlight it, make a note, a star it, go crazy about it. Because that ending with very few exceptions, that ending is how you can distinguish between an anion of an element and a polyatomic anion. Questions. So basically what I did folks is I took, took the ending of the element and I replaced it with IDE when I went from element form to ion form for the, for the anions. That's not true for the cations, but that is true for the anions. Okay, so the next thing I want us to do is I want us to do atomic number. Number of protons, number of electrons, 
element symbol. and ion symbol for cations and anions of elements. Let's see what you remember. So what was on the first class, you can't forget. It's going to keep coming up. The atomic number tells us what? The number of protons. What else does it tell us? What does the number of protons tell us? In a, it tells us the identity. Only in a neutral atom does it tell us the electron. So again, the atomic number does tell us the number of protons which tells us the identity. Does the number of protons ever change? No. That is something you need to get solidified. Protons never change. So these cations and these anions The reason they exist is because of electron changing. Ions only exist because of the number of electrons changing. So, if I give us S for sulfur. What is the atomic number? 16, it's the blue number in the boxes on that periodic table. So how many protons are there? 16. What is it, what's gonna be its ion symbol? It's a group 16 non-metal. It will be a two minus. So how many electrons are there? I hear 14 and 18. Let's see who's correct. And I'm gonna do it mathematically. We'll start with the 18. Okay. So protons, you said there are 16. What charge does a proton have? Positive. Electrons, if we say there are 18, what charge does an electron have? Negative. Add that together. And what is the answer? Negative two, does that match? Yes, so it had 18 electrons. I'm gonna let, cause I saw people watching as I did this and now they're writing. I'm gonna give those a couple of seconds to write.
The next one, I've given you scandium three plus. I'm gonna have to tell you the charge on the transition metals. So you know which one I'm talking about. So the element is scandium. How many protons? Twenty-one, because that's its atomic number. So how many electrons? Okay, I've been given a 24. Let's see if that's correct. Protons have what charge? Electrons have what charge? Add that together, what's the answer? What kind of three? Negative three, does that match? No, so it's not 24. So it is 18, so let's double check. I got a plus 21. I have 18 electrons, which are negative. The difference between that is a plus three. Does that match? Yes, then it is 18. So in other words, by doing the math, you can check yourself. There's really no <coughs> reason to get this wrong. The hardest part is remembering what the elements make. So we're going to speak out loud as a group what they do with the thingy. There it is. I want to know the charge. It's plus two. Why? Because it's part of the staircase, and this is the part that had two elements in it. Minus two. Why? Big root sixteen. Plus two. Why? Two. I heard plus and minus three. It's a plus three because it's a metal. Metals are always positive. And it's also part of the stair step, and it's the one that has the three elements in it. That's going to be your hardest task. For this, or it should be, I should say, your hardest task for that type of table is simply remembering them. Again, all of these that are in the middle that I did not give you a specific charge for, I will tell you, I will have to give you information to get the charge. So, Hashium, I'll have to tell you what it is. Tungsten, molybdenum, I'll have to tell you what those are. So the hardest part is going to be to figure out the charge. But once you know the charge, folks, you hopefully can do basic addition and subtraction. And if it matches, Then you've got the right number of protons to electrons. And these two columns will always match what it says on the periodic table. They never change.
questions? Okay. Now to get into your polyatomic ions. I will be posting a help sheet that has what I'm about to go over on it. But I'm gonna do it slowly and I'm going to work on it Wednesday as well because there are several trends that if you can identify the trend, it will help you in memorizing a lot of information. So with group two, we're going to start with our element boron. Boron does not form a charge by itself. However, the polyatomic ion of boron combines three oxygens and makes a three minus charge. And this ion is called borate. Group 14, carbon. Carbon by itself is not frequently found in ions, but it does have some polyatomic ions associated with it. One of those polyatomic ions that's associated with carbon is CO3 2 minus. And this ion is called carbonate. Now, the next element, nitrogen, It also will form a polyatomic ion with oxygen and it has a minus one charge. This one is called nitrate. Now, once everybody gets that written down, I want you to tell me what trends you see. One at a time. Yes. <clears throat> so one trait is that there's always three oxygens. 
What else do you see trend wise? Every single one of these ends in A-T-E that I've got listed so far. So, oh, wait, there's a note there. In, not group, brutal. Period. My brain is not. In period, there's a note there. Period two, three oxygens ends in eight. There's one more trend. They're all negative, but. It goes from negative three to negative two to negative one. To me, that would be helpful in memorizing. You know why? Because I might just memorize just nitrate. I just memorize nitrate. And by understanding the eight had three oxygens, all of a sudden I can get carbonate and borate. If I just memorize nitrate and understand this charge trend, then I go, oh, negative one, negative two, negative three. I don't have to memorize. Three. I memorized one of the three. But I understand the trend. Now, folks, I'm not saying it's up to you how you do this. You may want to memorize every single ion. That may be the best way for you. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that from that if you can spot these trends, it'll make your life easier. Now, group 15 and group 16 are known as families of two. Meaning that there are two polyatomic ions minimum. So the other one in this particular thing is called nitrite. So what do the eight and the eight have in common? Huh? The eight and the eight. They do have a TE, but what else? But what does the formulas have in common? Maybe I should let me be more specific. Huh? They're the element combined with oxygen, but what else? They have the same charge. Eight. And ice have the same charge. So what does that mean? If I know the eight, I know the eight. I don't have to memorize the charge. It's the same one. So what are the differences between the eight and the eight? The I only has two oxygens. In other words, if I memorize the eight, I have a lot of information about the I, 
All I gotta do is reduce one oxygen. These are trends you're going to see. So we have discussed some trends already. One of the trends is the eight in the same period has the same number of oxygens. That is going to be a continuing trend. The ATEs in the same period will have the same number of oxygen. Another trend that is going to be a constant is it is going to wind up dropping by chart one. Or, you know, we're going to go from three to two to one. That's another trend that is going to be a constant storyline. The last constant in our storyline is going to be go from an A to an I. Everything will stay the same, except we'll lose one oxygen. So again, did I memorize carbonate and borate and nitrate? No, I understood the trends. And so I can get there from nitrate. That's a lot. That means I, instead of memorizing four, I'm down to one. That's 25% rather than 100% of it. And these are, again, going to be the same trends we're going to see. Now, there, there are other polyatomics of carbon, nitrogen, oxygen has some polyatomics also. We will be talking about those. There are going to be some that I cannot give you a trend for. But by the by giving you the trends I'm going to give you, you'll be able to reduce it by about 50% to 66% of what you got to memorize by understanding the trends. So there's going to be some that I just cannot give you a uh, simplified way to memorize. But I'm going to do my best to help you memorize them. Because we're about to get into the rest of the story, and it's a much bigger story, we're cutting out 10 minutes early. And on Wednesday, I'm going to go through more trends of the polyatomic ions. And then on Friday, we're going to play bingo, probably candy or something. That's going to be related to all the polyatomic. Yes. Hold on, I can hear. It has to, okay, so this is something we're not getting into in this course. You'll get into it more when you get into politician one or general question about how science It has to do with how the electrons are shared between nitrogen and oxygen. But what you just asked me is actually an important piece of the puzzle for the rest of the story. So what we're going to find out is period two is actually the oddball with respect to the charge. The majority of the rest of the story is going to fit the charge rule. So, period two is an oddball. And it has to do with this electron configuration going into the uh, structure of the molecule. Okie dokie, folks. I will see you on Wednesday. Thank you. <laughs>